crochet and knitting designer living in New York in the UK with my three Bengal cats who I'm sure will make an appearance at some point. If you are new here, welcome. Please stick around. I hope you find something that you enjoy in this podcast. And if you've been here for a while, you know what kind of chaos we get up to. So settle in. It should be a good episode. I have two finished objects. Nearly had three, but didn't quite make it. I have news of a giveaway that I was running on my spinning anniversary, my spinning birthday video. Um, I'm going to tag it onto this one as well in case people didn't necessarily want to watch that because they're not interested in spinning, which is absolutely fine. So I'll, I'll have a little quick word about that in Waffle at the end, just so there's another chance to enter in this video. Yeah, I have, I think I have three new cast-ons this video, two of which are sweaters because... April is going to be another whip down month so I'm going to have another month with no cast ons so pretty much I'm just casting on anything I might possibly want to work on in April and in March which I don't think is really the right idea but I do like a way of getting around the, own, the rules I impose on myself. Right before I dig in, hello Jax, um one, we have a new podcasting spot. I've moved to Spinning Corner so I can get Mary in the shot and also my new Monstera. It's my birthday on the 28th of March. So um, my sister, who is also a bit of a plant fiend like I am, but unfortunately for her, or fortunately, depending on how you see it, she lives opposite a garden centre. Sorry, cat noise. Um, and so she occasionally arrives with... Um, lovely bargain plants and um this monstera was is my birthday present and i must say i very much love it right we're having cat squabbles already so yeah a quick note before i start where to find me online because i always forget to mention it uh, i am liz ward crafts on instagram and ravelry um I do have a Instagram account just mainly for the podcast. So if there's any ever any podcast announcements, so you don't want all the pictures of the cats, you just want to know when the next podcast is going to be, you can follow the Yarn Waffle Podcast Instagram account. All these details will be on the screen. Um, I also have a website, which is mainly for my crochet patterns, which I know I don't really talk about a lot on this podcast, but it's mainly because for the past year, at least, I have been working on secret crochet work and I'm still not allowed to tell anybody about it and, and I'm not going to be allowed to tell anybody about it for at least another six months if it even goes ahead. It might not go ahead but one thing I can tell you is it's not a book. I'm not writing a book although I might be writing a book but that's another crochet project. Shh, shh, shh. Um, yes. If you would like to support this podcast, I have a Ko-fi account. If you would like to drop me a couple of quid, that would be amazing. The equipment I just had to fork out for to keep this podcast running, it was fairly spendy. Um, and at the moment, this podcast brings in no revenue to me. I just do it because I enjoy it and I want to improve my skills as a video editor. And mainly, I do it because I want to talk about my knitting to people. I have nobody to talk to about my knitting, so I talk to you guys. And you guys put up with me. But yeah, if you ever wanted to like buy me a coffee, which is what Kofi is all about, I will leave all the links in the description box below, along with all the links for anything I talk about in the podcast. Any information for anything I talk about in the podcast will be in the description box below. I do quite detailed show notes and um, yeah, there will be links to patterns, there will be links to suppliers, there will be links to everything. Um, yeah, this is why editing takes me such a long time because I have to stop and write, type up my show notes. But yes, I will stop waffling on, for the time being at least, um, and crack in and show you some finished objects. Right, so finished objects, and I have two finished objects. It was nearly three, and you'll see when I get to works in progress, but yeah, two, two, two finished objects. And the first one is my rainbow litmus cowl. And if I can actually get this so it's going to light it properly. The dark section in this, the sort of purpley section here, is really dark. But yeah, if I get it to, to twizzle around. Ooh, this is quite good fun. I don't know why. I don't think I can stop. Um, 
This is a pattern by Jude Harper of Stranded Dye Works. It is a free pattern on Ravelry and it is a cowl which is just a big tube and the idea is that you stripe it to create sort of a really simple but I think really lovely cowl and you can double it up and wear it around your neck which is what I will now do because it's lovely. I knit this in a, the black is Drops Nord, I think, fairly sure, fairly sure it's Drops Nord and I actually used, there's 50 gram balls and I actually went into the third ball um, and used about 10 grams of that, so a bit more than 100 grams. Um, yeah, the colour is a self-striping sock yarn, I will put the details of that on the screen, however this is a discontinued colour. Um, and I got this yarn from the first ever Spring Into Wool yarn festival that I went to. I'm quite excited because I might be going to Spring Into Wool this year. So, um, But yeah, this is actually a discontinued colourway and it, I think it's worked out absolutely perfect for this litmus cowl. I've been quite tempted to have a look at their other colourways and see if something else works because I'm... I really enjoy the litmus cowl pattern. It is just that sort of potato chippy knitting that you can have on the go when you want to watch movies and things like that. I find these very addictive knitting. Um, there is something about the stripes and the stockinette in the round and it's a nice loose gauge so it doesn't hurt your hands and so yeah I do think I would be very tempted to cast on another one. This is actually my fourth I have knit one for me in a mini set of, from River Knits. Uh, I knit one in a Ducky Darlings yarn, the Rust Bucket colourway, and a mini set from Lay Family yarn that my mum has. I'm going to insert a picture of my mum and her new cat. Um, more, more, more in the waffle section. Um, about a year ago I knit one in the Solar System mini set from Siobhan's Craft and that was with a very very dark navy and now this one is black and rainbow so recently I've knit two very dark ones I would like to knit another paler one um, and I think I might have some Ducky Darlings yarn that would be good for the main colour I mean pretty much I have Ducky Darlings yarn that would be useful for anything <laughs> and everything still don't have enough um, you're right cow cow. So yeah I'm really pleased with this finished object. So I, I think I've mentioned before about the construction, It's ba you're basically knitting in the round. I use short circulars so um, well about 40 centimetre circumference um, circulars so it's just like knitting a sock, just go round and round and round and keep going. Um, and at the end when you finally get to the end you kitchener stitch this together. The first time I did that I couldn't do Kitchener Stitch so I did a three needle band off which ended atrociously. Um, it's fine, it's fine, it still gets worn, it looks absolutely fine, it, do it doesn't, it looks awful. You can hide it, you can hide it. Um, the second one I did that Kitchener Stitch was a bit loosey goosey and um, the Solar System one, a bit better dark yarn, can't really tell if it's atrocious, um, it, it, but this one I felt like I got there with it, I felt like I did the kitchener pretty good, so it, that definitely wouldn't put me off doing another one, but yeah. So yeah, that is my litmus cowl, uh, very happy with it and it definitely won't be long before I cast on another, but probably not for a couple of months because as I say April is a whip down month so no cast ons and um, I think May is getting into summer knitting. I don't know, I can't remember my calendar. Um, if I can find it, I'll put it on the screen. Um, but yeah, litmus cowl finished. Finished objects number two is my tied knots hat. And this again is a free pattern. I put all the details in the card as always. Um, and it's an all over cable pattern that starts with a two by two rib and from there sort of seamlessly blends into this beautiful knotted cable pattern. Let's see what the camera wants to do with this. So this is knit in DK weight yarn and it's a semi-solid and it's by Ishrat of Fruitful Fusions. I cannot remember the colourway um, but it is a very 
very dark green and it is beautiful it is beautiful i have blocked this it's finished and blocked now i haven't worn it yet i've been waiting to show you guys but now i can actually wear it um i have tried it on though and i'm very happy with it so it does have hang on, does have a bit of slouch in the back which i like but yeah i'm very very happy with it I'm undecided as to whether to put the pom-pom on because of the slouch. So the pom-pom, pom-pom might drag it down a bit and the pom-pom's not gonna sit on the top of my head. I could brim it up. I'm going to scooch, scooch down in the thingy. If I brimmed it up, then the pom-pom would be good. But when it's all slouchy, I'm not a fan of pom-poms in the back of my neck. But yeah, I don't know. I, this pom-pom was made to go with this hat, this this yarn. Um, But maybe not with this actual hat style. Don't know. Leave me a comment if you think I should put the pom-pom on. Or leave it off. It's one of those tie on ones so I can just pop a little button on the inside and tie it on for fancy occasions that need a pom pom. I'm sure they exist. But yeah, I'm really really pleased with this. So I recently learnt to cable without a cable needle and I did that throughout and I have knit this pattern before and the first time I knit it was some yarn from Kay Jones of the Bakery Birds and it was my absolute favourite hat until I felted it. I put it in too hot a washing machine and shrunk it and it was a very very sad day because that yarn is, I'm, ne I'm not getting that yarn again. Yeah so it's been on the list to re-knit again but I was a bit dubious because it had taken me such a long time to knit the original using a cable needle so not, so cabling without a cable ne needle I find is much much quicker and also I seem to just understand the cables more so it feels more intuitive and that has just come with practice and patience I think more than anything um, but yeah very very pleased with this I won't leave it on too well but I will just put it on again because I like it I'm hoping we're not too dark in this corner but don't know. Everything's a work in progress. We will get there with it eventually. You're right. Also, Puka's upstairs sulking. I don't know if you can see this little scratch on my head here. Puka scratched me. She didn't really get told off about it because I didn't notice it at the time. And if you tell cats off after the fact, they've no idea what's going on. So it's just utterly pointless. Um, but yeah, Puka sleeps on my pillow there my pillow um and jack's now decided that he would like to sleep on my pillow too but there is definitely not room for two cats and me on my pillow um so there was a little squabble while i was asleep and i woke up to a little scratch on my forehead so actually i'm blaming puka might have been jack's right shall we move on to whips <laughs> So whips and I have three new cast ons to show you and one that you have already seen. Um, I might actually need to get a sock blocker. Oh no, I do have a sock blocker. Excellent. Look at me being so prepared. Um, it's not a pair of sock blockers, it's just one. But yeah, this, this is in a bag that I made and um, I will actually be having some bags up in my Etsy shop really soon. If you follow me on Instagram, I'll be posting on Instagram when they will be going live in my Etsy shop and it is going to be the big sweater bags that I have. Um, I've just realised I've left one of my projects that I have to show you over there. It's all the way over there. It's on the sofa where I normally sit. Um, Hang on, I'll just go get it. Every time I get up, I feel like I've moved the camera when I haven't actually touched it. So, or I'm sitting in a different spot. 
But yeah, I'm going to be having some of the big sweater bags that I make that are made from tea towels. Um, so they are a one size, but they are fantastic for sweater projects. The reason that I'm going to be making some for my Etsy shop is because I have cast on two new sweaters that need project bags. So in order to justify making myself new sweater project bags, I'm going to make some to sell. <laughs> hey ho. Um, Oh, seeing as though I've grabbed this, I'll show you what's in here. So this is my Spark sweater. This is a pattern by Andrea Maori. All the details will be on the screen. And I am knitting this out of hand spun. Um, and it's rainbow fibre from Crafty Cat's fibre, Crafty Cat's Knitty Bits. And um, a, the dark grey is from Woolly Knit. It's their DK that comes on like 400 gram um, big hanks. And this is very, very nearly finished. It was stalled for a long time because I had to spin for the sleeves. And I have now finished that spin. I finished that spin the last time I showed you. Um, and now I have one sleeve done. Uh -oh. You may be able to notice that it is slightly brighter on the sleeve than in the jumper. I'm fine with that. Um, it could be that this, this was dyed on a grey Coriadale fibre. And this grey may have been slightly lighter. Um, it's fine. I think it will darken with wear. So when I spun for this sweater, I, if I can, I'll put a picture of the fibre in for you to see. It's a big rainbow gradient. It's absolutely beautiful. Debs does amazing fibre. I have some to show you in acquisitions. Um, yeah, Debs does amazing fibre and what she's really good at is these gradients. Um, so what I did is for the body of this sweater, I had two of these rainbow gradients and I spun them end to end, just as it came, as it came, from the top as it came. Um, and then I chain plied it and kept the colour and that gave me a nice DK weight um, yarn that went well with this dark grey. And so I've done the Sparky. It is an all over colour work design and I think it, it sort of gets lost a bit. Actually on camera it looks beautiful. I just, I can't wait to wear this now. Um, I think I'm making about the third size or the fourth size. I, I was a bit dubious about what, how much yarn I would have. So I knit a size smaller, but then I increased the size after the yoke. So there may be some fitting issues when we get there. But when I spun for the body, I just spun it end to end, end to end as it came, blah, blah, and chain plied it. But obviously if I was gonna do that for the sleeves, I was gonna end up with a sleeve in pretty much just all one color. Hey baby boy. Please leave my plants alone. Yeah, so we we're going to end up with a sleeve in pretty much just one colour. So I sat down and did the maths and worked out what the ratio of stitches around the body to around the sleeve are and how I would have to split the fibre to then get the same sort of stripey effect. And I sat down and did that and it worked out that I needed to quarter it. So a quarter, you know, so there's a quarter amount of stitches on a sleeve to what there is on the main body of the sweater. That worked out absolutely brilliantly for the first sleeve. I think you can see just how bang on perfect that is. I don't think it could have matched better if I'd planned it. And I did plan it, I did, but on even I didn't think it would work out quite that perfect. Now, that didn't quite go to plan with the second sleeve. The second sleeve, as you can see, is a little bit out of whack, but yeah. But yeah, in a way, this makes me feel better because this is kind of what I expected it to do. I wanted it to start off in the same color 
um, which is where I split the fiber and then um, yeah so this this is what this is what I was expecting to happen I was not expecting this perfection of lining up look I mean look at it it's ridiculous it couldn't match more perfectly if I tried and I mean, I tried a little bit but I didn't try for this this is a level of perfection that I don't even attempt to achieve because yeah this makes me happier right yeah if can you imagine if both these sleeves matched like that no one would believe I knitted this um but yeah it it's lovely um I really really do love it and I don't really have that much further to go um so yeah sleeves I really just have this colour work section and the cuff to go um, and then this will be finished so next time you see it it should be a finished object unless it takes me six months to block like my last sweater project did. not good but yeah that is my sparky sweater oh actually before I shut up about it if you have been a regular viewer of this podcast you know that whenever I pick projects out of projects bags I um kind of have all my stitches falling off the needles because I never use a um, needle stoppers last episode I decided enough was enough it is time to buy needle stoppers so I had a look and the pretty much the main type that you can get look like this I'll put it in a picture kind of like little nipples for the best <laughs> yeah nipples for for the best word for the end of your needles they don't fit all needle types and they only come in packs of two and they're about a they come in like packs of two or four but e even so one that's going to get lost it's probably going to get eaten by a cat and um might not fit on all my needles i don't know there's just something i i worked in a haberdashery for years i know these needles stoppers and that's kind of why i don't use them because i'm just not a fan um so i did look at alternatives and i didn't see much there are some really cute fun ones out there um but yeah i don't know i couldn't really think and then i had the genius idea of trying a um memory foam earbud so you know in-ear headphones have that little bit of foam around the speaker bit um, and I got some memory foam ones because I was having trouble with them hurting my ears um, but I don't use in-ear headphones anymore I've got the, the big uh, ones because I'm cool um, so I had some spare of these little memory foam ones and I thought why not give them a go and I did um, and they worked really well because they're quite stretchy so they'll fit on any needle size you can put two on a two needles in one bud and um yeah they're really good so i went on to um amazon so i went on to amazon to see what sort of price these were and i was actually able to get a box of about 30 of them for a couple of pounds so like three or four dollars um i'm gonna summon the cat if i keep rattling this but yeah there's there's loads in here so i now have them on all projects that require them and they are working wonders um no more lost stitches except for when i forget to put them on but yeah i'll put in a little close-up and leave the link to the ones i got in the description box below um i am in no way affiliated with amazon but uh yeah if you um are not a fan of the needle stoppers that are out there I can highly recommend these they pretty much go on any needle up to maybe like a, a probably wouldn't be much good with anything over a seven mil but even then if you just used one of them they probably would be fine but if you wanted both needles in they wouldn't work with a seven mil plus don't know what that is in American sizes anyway that is my little needle stopper waffle and that is my spark sweater i really cannot wait to get this finished maybe i could finish it this afternoon probably would only take like an afternoon and it'd be done but technically no i should probably wait until april and it'll count as one of my finished whips for april so yeah okay 
It's only a week away. Don't remind me when April is. Um. Okay, so what's next? So in here, I have the icing call socks and I'll put the details on at the screen and I am definitely saying it correctly. The lady who wrote this pattern, who is a genius, um, actually left a message on the, uh, left a comment on the podcast to say that it is Ice Inkles and brilliantly named because it is icicles, because these look like icicles, and ankles because they are socks and we have ankles and yes very much applaud that whimsy um just more oh, yes um it's the type of thing if somebody told me that was why and that person was in front of me i'd be like yeah i, I need to shake your hand well done well done um yeah these are the icing called socks and this is a pattern that uses mosaic knitting and one pass cables again i'm cabling without a cable needle so it's really really simple um, and they are designed to use sock sets so um, a 20 gram mini with either like a 50 gram main skein or 100 gram main skein and i am using the club of the month colorway no it's going to really blow up i'll put some pictures on um, I'm using the Club of the Month colourway for January from Ducky Darlings. She's doing a sock set club this year, so it's a perfect excuse, especially for using with these patterns, because they are designed to use that. And this, if I didn't say, is from a set of four patterns, which is a really good price to get the set, um, and they're lovely fun patterns to do. And really, they look so complicated, but they're not. And the pattern is so brilliantly written. Uh, just brilliantly. Like, I am a big critique when it comes to pattern writing because obviously I write crochet patterns all the time. Um, and <laughs> side, side note again, let's, let's settle in while we have a little bit of a, a catty session. Yeah, pat, pattern writing is one of my big bugbears. If it's written badly, I almost can't make the thing. But yeah, one, well, this is a really good pattern, really well written. I wanted to um, have a crochet project for the podcast, so a crochet project that isn't work, and I wanted to cast on a um, a crochet cardigan. So I actually bought a pattern, a really nice pattern, um, a really nice looking finished object in the pattern, and the pattern is so badly written. I'm not going to say what it is or what the pattern is because I just don't think that's fair. Because I think a lot of it is, is subjective and it's my personal taste. But I definitely can't work with this pattern. It starts with like two or three pages full of instructions before you even get to any schematics of sizing. I, I had to search to find what hook size I needed. And there's like... It's not just that. It was the fact that it's not... There was, it's not just that, it's not just the fact that it was difficult to even find what hook size. It was, there were so many different sections which were like, you know, this is important in capitals and in bright red writing, or bits in bright blue writing in capitals, or bits in bright yellow writing, or bits that were outlined and boxed and not. This was even before I got to any of the pattern instructions and I was just like, this pattern is shouting at me and it needs to know. Needless to say, you won't be seeing that crochet cardigan <laughs> on the podcast. But I am really hoping to come up with a crochet pattern that I want to work on for the podcast because I think it's such a shame that I don't do a lot of crochet on the podcast when it is actually something I do really enjoy doing and I only ever seem to do it for work. If you have any crochet pattern suggestions for shawls or cardigans specifically, they're the two things that I'm sort of looking at, or maybe even like little summer tops, that'd be quite good. Um, please leave me a comment with the crochet pattern name or the um, and or designer name that you particularly like patterns for, and I will go take a look because I am definitely on the hunt and I need to cast something on before the end of March because I can't do it in April. Um, and in here is the next project for the next episode of Spin to Knit. The next episode of Spin to Knit will be going up on the last day of March, which is next Thursday. Today is Wednesday. This is not being finished knit yet. 
Technically there's another project that I could do for an episode that's sort of nearly finished too, which is just a headband so it'd be quicker to knit, but I haven't finished the spin on that one yet. So need to crack on with this one, but technically I, ha I have plenty of time, don't worry. I have plenty of time. So this episode is going to be um, vanilla socks. So spinning for vanilla socks and the pattern I have chosen is called vanilla chocolate socks. Um, it's a toe up sock pattern. I'll put the details on the screen. And what I wanted to do is um, spin a self striping sock yarn. So I'll put some close ups in because this is going to really blow out. Um, this is the yarn that I spun. So this was a fibre from Furbeck Fibres and um, I split it so that it would repeat without having any sort of line between the colour. So you'd, so what you get is this really cute, this really nice sort of fading effect between the stripes, but they are at the moment fairly even stripes. So I'm just at the point in the first sock where I need to put the heel in um, and I have spun separately for the heels and cuffs. So this was spun um, where I split the fibre into sections and each of those sections w makes a stripe repeat. So there are six, there are going to be six of these stripe repeats, so three per sock. Um, and what was left of the fibre I just spun end to end, so that is more of a gradient fade. So it will just be one colour on each of the heels and cuffs. I think they're going to be really lovely socks. Also, because this is hand spun, um, it's super bouncy and squishy. Really bouncy and squishy. And they, they, they just feel glorious. They really do. So yeah, this is going to be the project that I am focusing the most on over the next week, definitely. Um, yeah, need to get these finished so that episode will be up a, a week on Thursday. Last day of March. My schedule has had to move around slightly, but I will talk about that in Waffle. Got a sneaky cow. You alright, sneaky cow? Kind of hoping this isn't going to be too long a podcast, but it's feeling like a long one already. So if it is long, I apologise. Two more whips to go. Spinning and acquisitions is going to be really speedy. Just give Cal a minute to settle down. I don't really want her to snag my sweaters. Right, 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 right. Right, these are the two new sweater cast ons and these aren't in project bags, which is why I'm going to be making some. Um, so this is the Baltane, Baltine sweater by Caitlin Hunter. And this is a bat wing sweater. So the ones where your sleeves come out to about here, pictures. Um, and it's a really interesting construction. It starts with a I-cord cast on, which is not how I would do an I-cord cast on, but I am not, I am not the expert, but I, I know some things and I wouldn't do it like this. Um, so you are increasing as you are doing a I-cord, which is tedious. Um, I think it took me about three hours to do the cast on. Mainly just because I'm slow doing an eye cord in general but when you're increasing at the same time. Um, but as I said to mum when I was doing it, well I only have to do it once. I'm gonna eat those words aren't I? Um, yeah, so I did the eye cord cast on and I did the setup rows in the beginning bit and I did the short rows and I was thinking, well, this is good. I definitely haven't twisted it. And I twisted it. I don't know how, I'm 99% certain. Well, no, I know I checked it. I know I checked it to see if I twisted it. Um, 
And usually when you Mobius your cast on, when you twist it so that it loops on itself, the um, your working yarn ends up coming through the middle of your loop rather than being on the outside of it. So that's a giveaway that you've twisted your cast on and that wasn't happening. So I was like really unsure. So I kept knitting rows going, am I sure I've twisted this? Anyway, I had, I had twisted it. Um, and to be fair, there's no way I'm redoing that cast on. So all I did was I just twisted it back in on itself. Yeah, so it's a bit, I mean, it's not good, but while I'm here, I'll give you a close up. So this is a colour work. And this colour work is in Siri Alpaca. And again, it is by Ducky Darlings because half my yarn collection is by Ducky Darlings. Um, and it is her tobacco colour work, I think it is. It was part of my Christmas present from Mum. Um, yeah, just floof. The colour really isn't being done justice on here. It is golden and it, it's, should, should we go for a big word? It's luminescent. Yeah, it just glows, does this. So pretty. And it's soft as anything. Yeah, so chances are I am going to have to take off this neckband and do something with it. I am not doing that until I've finished the colour work at least. And to be honest, I think I'm fine about doing that because it's a really wide neck opening and I don't want it that wide. Yeah, and I don't, I don't want it that wide. So um, if something was going to have to be done about it anyway. Do you know, I was so dubious about doing that cable cast on, but I was like, no, that's what the pattern says. I must do what the pattern says. I wish I hadn't. I wish I'd just cast on the stitches and done what I originally thought of, which was, well, I can just do an I I can pick up those stitches and do an I cord bind off if I want the I cord edging, or I could just do a little rib. Because doing it that way, I, if you do it that way, because you're picking up stitches and then knitting a neckline, it's less likely to bag out. Like this one that I'm wearing now, I don't know if you can see, the neckline has really bagged out on it. Um, and I love this sweater and this is actually, oh, sorry, all the hair is in the way. Um, I love this sweater, but, and it's a folded, um, folded ribbing on this. So it's going to be a right pain if I decide what I want to do anything about it. What I could maybe do is try and open up a little bit and put a bit of elastic in it maybe. Um, that might look a bit weird because it might gither, gither in. Um, but it might be worth a try. This, this is a Andrea Maori pattern, another Andrea Maori pattern, um, and I can never remember what it's called. So I will give myself extra work to do and put a card in about it here. But yeah, anyway, back to the Baltane, which I, I think I've already said is a Caitlin Hunter pattern and it is Batwing. So with the big baggy, so put it this way, like. This normal sweater has sleeves that go up to my armpit. A bat wing has sleeves that from here go down to here. So like a big triangle is here. Like I've got wings. And I really like the bat wing style. I have a lot of sweaters that are in that style. Um, and I've been looking for a pattern to knit. And this, this one, I just thought it was really nice. It's a four ply weight. So it's designed, so it's designed for four ply or fingering weight yarn, depending on where you are in the world. Um, and it uses mohair or Surrey alpaca for the colour work section. The pattern suggests that you use two strands of mohair to get the same gauge as the fingering weight yarn. Um, but I found that the Surrey that I'm using is 
perfectly fine with just a single. And that also means that I am barely going to use any, any of this. I, I barely any of it. Um, I'm already, I think I've only got about 10 rows of colour work left to do. Um, and I'm not, I'm not even halfway through this 50 gram bowl. If I'm 20 grams through, I would be amazed. So yeah, the shaping of this is slightly different. It's pretty much, you're making a big diamond. So neck is here. And then we're going to go out like that. There's a little bit for sleeves where you're working front and back. So you're going to put, so you're literally just making two openings at the side. So I'm going to work the front separately to the back, just back and forth, back and forth. Then you go all the way in the round again, and then you're coming in. So yeah, in, that is the typical back wing shape. And then what you can do is you can pick up the sleeves and knit straight sleeves down and knit a hem as long as you want it. And that's why you get that nice baggy body bit, which I'm all for. And the tight sleeves and the tight around the hips. So for me, it's a style I really like. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing how this turns out. Um, I'm really hoping it blocks nicely. This, sorry. The thing that I didn't tell you was the main yarn that I am using and it is a navy blue and it is by Woolly Knit. It is one of their pure British wools and it's their two ply. These come on 200 gram hanks um, and I, at the moment I don't think they have any of this in stock. But yeah, it's really nice. Sorry, is it covered? Is it covered in bits? But yeah, it's it's really nice, um, and it will bloom quite a bit when it is blocked. But yeah, so just colour work to finish, and then we'll see how I get on with that. But yeah, that was a bit of an impulse cast on because just kind of want to try something in the bat wing style. Try knit. Sorry, I just wanted to try knitting something in that bat wing style that I really like. So yeah, but it needs a project. Okay. So the next cast on, I'm probably going to have to stand up again, is um, a new pattern by Thea Coleman. And as soon as I saw this, I was like, yep. So I have been um, wanting to cast on a cabled sweater for a long time. And I mean a long time, like over over a couple of years but i'm i cannot decide what pattern i want for me i've knit one for richard um and i really enjoyed knitting it and to be honest it didn't take that long but because a big cable sweater is a time commitment i wanted to make sure if i was knitting one for myself i was gonna love it and wear it i have quite a few cable patterns in my collection um and a lot of them probably will get knit. But when this one came out by Thea Coleman, I was just like, do you know what? A cardigan would just be perfect right now. I think it was coming off the back of that cardigan, the crochet cardigan pattern drama. And I saw this picture and I was like, that'll do. Now, the first thing she gets you to do is knit the pockets. Um, and I am again using yarn from Woolly Knit for this. This is a DK wet yarn. This is the same yarn that I am using for my Sparky, but this is the bottle green. Um, and this, this is my colour. Can I have all my clothes in this colour, please? I'd be so happy. I, I probably look like Robin Hood, but I'd be happy. I'd be a happy green fairy. Um, yeah, this is lovely. It's 100% British wool. It is, I think, about a four ply. Nice for cables. Um, yeah, non superwash, but really, really nice feeling. It's not in any way itchy or scratchy. Um, just lovely. And the colour, the, it is a flat colour. It's not heathered in any way. Um, it's definitely a flat colour. Um, and that is why I wanted to use it for a pattern that had some interest because there is 
less interest in the colour, apart from it being a beautiful green. So yeah, the uh, Coleman gets you to knit the pockets first, just so I'm going to stand up and show you. Getting exercise in and everything. So this is the cable design. It is like a broken rib and then these chain links. And yeah, she gets you to knit the pockets so that you can use them as a swatch before you cast on for the cardigan, which is a genius idea, apart from the fact that I didn't block or measure these before casting on the cardigan. I was like, got it, know the cable pattern now, let's crack on. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. But, but it is a boxy style cardigan. It is designed to have a lot of positive ease to it. Um, I am making a size larger than what I actually am anyway. So if I'm on the small side with my gauge, because I'm using DK weight yarn rather than worsted, which the pattern suggested, I can live with that. A lot of times it's mainly in the length you knit stuff for and things like that. We will cross bridges when we come to them if I'm have, gonna have problems with the fact that I didn't swatch and I'm not using the right needle size. Um, I don't think I am. If it comes out smaller than intent, the pattern intended it to do, that's not a bad thing because I'm making a size that's probably a bit too big for me because I want an oversized cardigan. So I knit these at the same time on a um, circular knitting needle with a fairly long cable um, and it seemed to take quite a long time to knit these pockets. So, but yeah, it's a cabled cardigan, it's a time commitment, it's gonna take a while. That's fine. So when I cast on the body I was kind of just, it's one of those projects I want to sit in a basket next to me, I don't want it to be too far away so I can always pick it up and work on it but I don't expect it to grow fast at all. I cast this on a week ago. <laughs> I mean it's 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 long um and it is all the cables and all the rib um, and I am nearly halfway through the body. In fact, I think actually I'm more than halfway through the body to the pattern, but I wanted to just to make it a little bit longer. So I'm going to do this again. But yeah, I have only been knitting on this in evenings. I think it had one full day of knitting for the rib. That was, um, that required a little bit of brain because um, it's not just a two by two, it follows the pattern of the cables. So yeah, so you've got your side panels and then this little bit of reverse garter stick with the chain in the middle, then the back and the side again. I really like those sides. And the other front. And the pockets are, will sit pretty much here. Again, I am cabling without a cable needle, which is making the cables pretty speedy, but also they are not particularly difficult cables. They are very repetitive. You're doing this chain cable where basically you're either going in or you're going out. Um, and as long as you don't confuse those, um, you, you've pretty much sorted. Um, yeah, I pretty much have this pattern memorized now. I don't have to, uh, you know, get my knitting app on my phone when I pick this up. It just sits in the basket next to me. There is a rhythm to it that surprises me that I enjoy so much, but it is that similar rhythm to a brioche, to one by one rib, like I'm knitting in the single mole. It surprises me I enjoy it so much, but I do. And I am finding it easy to watch telly and knit on this, hence it has grown so much in a week. Um, yeah, and the colour is just, just perfect. I have loads of this yarn, so I'm definitely not going to be running out of yarn anytime soon. Um, but yeah, 
really enjoying this project. It's a surprise to me as much as anybody, the fact that a cable pattern, a, a sweater cable pattern, I mean, it's a cardigan, but is so easy and relaxing that it's become telly knitting, which just is crazy to me. I wouldn't, I would have thought this would be there for the moments when I can knit and think a bit or want to just do something a bit more interesting in that moment than stocking it in the round. This is simple, intuitive, fun, relaxing. It's just been what I want to knit on at the moment and there's nothing wrong with that. Apart from the fact it's growing probably slightly quicker than I wanted it to. I wanted this to be a project that was going to be around for a long time and if I keep knitting on it the speed I do it's going to be finished in a couple of months. It's not going to be finished in a couple of months. Um, that's not how I work. Usually as it will slow as soon as I've got past this body section and start at the bits where I have to start opening up my phone and getting that uh, row counter app out and looking at the pattern. Um, so yeah, it will it will slow, but at the moment the body is going fairly speedy, uh, and it's beautiful. So yeah, that is my angels and en envy. That is my Angel's Envy sweater by Thea Coleman. Not too dissimilar green to my hat. So I'll just pop those back in there. I spied a Puka. Puka, come here, darling. Come here. I did spy a Puka. Hello, my baby. Don't grumble at me. Say hello to the people at home. Puka Puka. Okay, on to spinning, and I do have some spinning to show you. I finished spinning the um, pomegranate braid by Crafty Cat Fiber. Um, and he, Crafty Cat Fiber is the person who did the fiber for my spark sweater. As I said, she does amazing gradients, and yeah. Um, so I'm going to stand up and show you these. So these are the singles ready to ply. Colours are just lovely. Real sort of like rosy apple colours. So yeah, this is mainly what I've been spinning, which hasn't been for Spin to Knit. Um, and these are ready to ply. I am undecided whether to two ply them. That was, that was the plan, which is why they're on two bobbins, because it's quite fine, and that might end up. I might end up with like a lace weight yarn, which will have this gradient, and also some of the colours might blend. Might be some like I'm not sure how evenly these were split, split or spun. So there might be some bits where the colours blend together, which is nice. Um, the other option is that I chain ply them where um, I will end up with a three ply. Puka just fell off the table where the microphone's on. Um, yeah, the other option is that I chain ply them, so do one bobbin and then the other, joining them as I go. Um, and that I, with that, I would end up with a three ply sort of sock weight yarn, sort of like a fingering four ply weight. Um, and that is tempting also, but I haven't 100% decided. If you have any strong preferences, please do leave me a comment and um, I will definitely consider. So yeah, that has been the main project that I have been working on. What else have I, we're actually in the spinning corner. Um, Most of my spinning is in um, tubs which have lids on because my cats will um, eat the fibre if it, they get anywhere near it because it's so fluffy it gets in their mouth. They haven't got hands to take it out of the mouth so they just end up eating it. Not intentional. Um, right, so the other spin that I'm working on, I'm actually working on my Nano. And this is for an episode of Spin to Knit. 
And this is some of the Devonia range by John Arben. And this is going to be for a headband. I forget the pattern name. If I can remember, I'll put it on the screen. But yeah, um, I just have one more bobbin of these to do. To do. I'm spinning it quite chunky. I want um, about an hour in weight. Maybe a little bit thicker even than that. Um, hopefully, hopefully. Um, so yeah, I've just got one more bit of the fibre to spin, which I'll spin on the Nano and obviously film because it's for spin to knit. Also in here there is some beautiful yellow sari silk that needs to find a new home. What else have we got in spinning corner that I can show you? This is the um, giveaway I talked about at the beginning. Um, it is for this drop spindle kit. You can, if you want, leave a comment on this video and I will take that as an entry as well. Um, but yeah, it is a learn to spin drop kit spindle kit. So you get a drop spindle and all these beautiful bumps of fibre. Um, it's a lovely kit. It's very similar to the kit that I learnt to spin with. Um, it's a bit nicer than the kit that I learnt to spin with. Because in hindsight, that wasn't the best kit. And I've probably had more hurdles learning to spin because of that kit. I now can't close this box. But yeah, so I am giving this uh, box away. I am happy to post worldwide. So just leave a comment saying that you would like to enter for this in the comments on this video. Or by all means, go over and watch my spinning anniversary video if you haven't already and leave a comment on that one. And yeah, you could be in a chance to win this. I will be drawing the prize and all I will do is just comment on your post on YouTube. Once I have randomly picked the winner, I will just comment on your post. It just means that because it was a giveaway from a standalone episode, it just makes it easier for the winner to know they've won rather than having to watch another podcast episode. And the fish tank has just got an art bat in it that I started last night. Have not got very far with that. Yeah, sorry if there's another dramatic cut and the camera has changed. I just had to change the battery. Yet again, that is three batteries worth in this camera. Um, at least my old camera didn't use batteries quite so badly. Mind you, I could plug it in, which was more useful. But yeah, I was talking about these fibre acquisitions from Debs of Crafty Cat Fibre. Again, for the Alaska hat, which will be an upcoming episode of Spin to Knit. If you do have preference as to which one you would like to see me spin for that episode, I'm almost tempted to spin one and give the other one away. Apart from the fact that I don't want to give it up. Um, it's like if, I, if you want me to spin this one, that means I have to give this one up and I don't think I can do that. But if you want me to spin this one, I could probably give this one up. So pick wisely in what you want me to spin for the episode. <laughs> Although Debs has said if anybody would like this fibre, she is happy to dye it up. Again, it doesn't have a colour name, but if you say it's the Alaska hat fibre, um, she will um, know what you're talking about. And that is it for acquisitions. That is it. And I am going to be fairly speedy with waffle. But yeah, we'll we'll go. We'll have a little bit of waffle. There's a bit to talk about. So yeah, waffle. And uh, what do I have to tell you? So, spring into wool is on April the 9th. I don't know whether I'll have had another episode out before then. But if there isn't, I'm hoping to be there on the Saturday. I'm not 100% yet whether it's going to be feasible. Um, but yeah, I am hoping to be there on the Saturday. It's really difficult when you don't drive. You've got to sort of rely on other people going to get lifts or public transport. And public transport is notoriously bad. Um, so yeah, but fingers crossed I will be there um, on the Saturday the 9th. I think it's Saturday the 9th of April. 
uh, because yeah, there are so Furbet Fibers is going to be there, Ducky Darlings is going to be there, Ishra of Fruitful Fusions is going to be there. There's just so many wonderful people. We're going to make oh, Siobhan of Siobhan's Crafts is going to be there. So I really want to be there. Um, yeah, so Spring Into Wall is coming up. Very excited about that. Um, what else do we have to do? Oh, yeah, important news. April is going to be a weird month. Um, the house that I live in, this house, this bit that you see, um, yeah, the house that I live in is getting a new roof. Now, thankfully, I rent, so I don't have to deal with any of the drama about arranging that apart from coping with it happening while it's here. Um, it should just be a week, two weeks max, but it is going to throw off my recording schedule because if they are banging, I can't record any talky things. Um, I will be able to record like spinning bits where it's just going to have music over the top um, and I will be able to crack on with crochet work or by with probably a headache and a, in a bad mood. Um, but yeah, it's going to be noisy for one to two weeks. So if that falls in sort of podcast time, the podcast is going to be pushed. So the schedule is as follows. So yeah, so the schedule at the moment is that this podcast will go up tomorrow, which is Thursday the 24th of March. Um, Spin to Knit will come out a week after that. Um, a week after that, so probably will be a podcast before Spring Into All. Um, the first week in April there will be another podcast. And then I'm going to take a bigger break. So not one usual, not a two week break, I'm going to probably take a three week break. And um, then the last two weeks in April, hopefully, I don't know when the roofers are starting. But I, like I say, follow me on Instagram and all updates will be on there. Um, but yeah, the... All right, Grumbles. It's so bright out here. It's so bright. Um, grumbly cats. Hello, Puka. Love you. But yeah, the, yeah, right. And finally, the other news that I slightly teased at earlier is that Mum is getting a cat and she has decided, despite the many, many years of me moaning about my cats, who I love completely, but are absolute nightmares, um, she's decided to get a bungle. Um, well timed. Uh, yeah, and her only stipulation was that she want. Her only stipulation was that she wanted another Jax, as if there is another Jax in this world. He's the. He's an individual, is that cat? Um, but yeah. Uh, so I got in touch with my Bengal breeder, Sarah Starbone Bengals. She's absolutely lovely. Um, just to put feelers out and um, yeah and it turned out that Jax's brother from the same litter was actually looking to be rehomed so it's an older cat was well, same age as Jax not quite a year Jax's birthday is on the 13th of April he'll be a year then and so will Toby this new cat um so yeah Toby is a, another snow bengal he's actually a little bit bigger than Jax um he is lovely really lovely really took to mum um cats normally are drawn to me don't know why um but yeah he, he went for mum he wasn't interested in me which is just brilliant so he's living with sarah the bengal breeder at the moment um and he'll be living there until mum moves into her new flat and then they will move in together which is lovely it's just lovely so yeah i'm really joked about that it's nice to have another bengal in the family um there aren't enough of them and also i went to see sarah to see toby with mum and got to squeeze kittens and i didn't bring any of them home and i'm not going to bring any of them home there was this little girl no she's so pretty though no she really is pretty love at first sight no but yeah i no 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 more kittens for me for a long time it'll be a very sad day when i have to get another kitten 
because it means I'll have lost one of my three, which I don't even want to think about, so let's not think about that. Uh, but yeah, aren't I good? I managed to go to my Bengal breeder, Sarah's house, and see all the kittens and squeeze all the kittens and um, yeah, didn't, didn't decide to bring any home. Um, I, I can hear some of you sniggering and going, yeah, right. Um, the fact that I have to go there a few times is going to be quite difficult. Okay, I am going to shut up. I think I've talked about everything that I wanted to talk to you about this week. And so I will be back with another podcast in two weeks. And Spin to Knit will be up in at the end of next week. Um, hopefully it won't be light on the, on the knitting. Um... My brain was just like, well, maybe I could just get away with doing one sock. No, I don't, I don't think I can get away with that. I definitely don't think I can get away with that. Um, but yeah, Spinternet will be up next week. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for watching um, and continuing to support this channel. Please do leave a comment, give it a like and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. It really does make a difference without costing you anything. Um, but yeah, that is it for this week. So I will see you soon. But till then, goodbye, my friends.